Today I want to take a look at how to use the people picker with PMP controls for SPFX. So here we have the introductory page that describes the project and what this is useful for. It is part of the PMP SPFX family. The package name is at PMP slash SPFX property controls. And the one we're interested in today is the people picker. There's a couple of other types of pickers icon picker, color picker, date time. But we want to take a look at people picker. Here's a couple screenshots. You guys are familiar. You put in three letters. It does actually require three letters minimum to get started. You pick the match and then you'll have the description of that person. There are a couple of parameters that we can configure. Things like allow duplicates false. If we want to do multi-select, is there any initial data to initialize the control? and a couple of other different properties uh, here as well. Oh, what principal types? Do you want to do users, groups, and or only users, or possibly only groups? So there's a couple settings to be aware of, and let's go ahead and add this to a project. Today I want to take a look at how to use the people picker control for PMP SPFX. Here we have the project name at PMP slash SPFX dash property dash controls. There's a description of all the different features, and these are used for the property panel on the right hand side. There's a couple different pickers for color, date, time, folder, icon. The one we're interested in is people picker down here. Going into that, we can see a screenshot of the control itself and how it does autocomplete after giving it three letters minimum, it will search. There are parameters we can configure as far as things like allow duplicates, true, false. Is it going to do users, groups, or other data types? And a few other things, including like initial data, if you wanted to initialize who is on the control by default. Let's see how we can add this to our project. First thing we'll do is go ahead and type in yo at pmp forward slash spfx, which we have already installed in the background. And we're going to go ahead and pick out React.js for our framework. And we want to bring in the PMP property controls right here. That's a special third party reference. We do space to select them and enter to continue. We'll go ahead and pick the defaults for TypeScript. No need to select the other items. And our project is being made. Now we can give the project a name. We'll go ahead and create a subfolder. And we'll say no to the full tenant deployment. Will they require access to an API? We'll say no. We'll choose web part. We'll give it the same name one more time for the web part itself. No description, and our web part's created. Now with our PMP web part ready, we can go ahead and do gulp serve to start the local workbench. Now here, when I run gulp serve, I actually get an error message that primordials is not defined. This has to do with NVM, Node Version Manager. It's something that lets you run different versions of Node all at the same time. So you can switch between versions like 8, 10, and 12. Um, gulp serve, OK, NVM on. We want to do NVM use 10.24.1, gulp serve. So by using the nvm use command, we can go ahead and switch things up a little bit. And we also can do list dash g dash dash depth zero to check our global packages that are installed. Here we have a couple of them. Go ahead and do npm install again, download the locals, and we'll be ready to run. All right, with gulp serve completed, we now have our PMP web part added on the canvas. We can modify, change the text, and it has the default hello world placeholder we can see on the left and right. If we come over to the code for this project, we'll want to open that by taking a look at the same folder. And by typing code dot, we can launch the VS Code editor in the same working folder. We'll come in here to web parts, take a look at components, and there's a couple things of interest. One of them is the props file. The other is the TSX layout. And then, of course, the main web part itself. On this particular project, we want to come down and look at package JSON and make sure that the controls are included. They are. Here's the name, SPFX property controls. Double check that first. And with that in place, we can come over here and start importing it to our main web part TypeScript file. 
Now, add as a matter of convention to help with support, one thing I like to do is fold in my exports, look at my imports, and then go ahead and add any custom ones kind of here at the bottom of the imports that we already have. And when you're doing imports for custom objects, I like to just say import, open, close, curly, from, quote, and then get the autocomplete. Here we can see SPFX property controls, slash lib, slash, and come on down a little bit further, and we will find our people picker. Now, which classes, which TypeScript classes do we actually want to import? For this one, we're going to be looking at a couple. There's I, property, field, group, or person. Good. There's property, field, people, picker. And then there's principal type. So these are the three things we really care about coming for the people picker. Now, roughly speaking, the top half of the file's imports, bottom half's exports. If we come into this very first export, it currently has a single string for our properties. We actually want to expand that, and we want to add a property for people that, it, that implements the interface I property field group or person with the array open close. This gives us the storage for what we're expecting on our web part properties, and it expresses it in the correct type so we have all of the IntelliSense and autocomplete and the TypeScript awareness of the properties of that class. So beyond the interface, we have our primary class for the web part itself. And in here, you're going to find a property pane configuration. There are pages which contain groups. Here we have one page and we have one group. This is the default setting, and we're bringing in a single text field for people to work with. Let's go ahead and get a little bit of working space down here. We'll make a note about the PMP property panel. We'll put our new code in between that note. And this is going to be a new type. It's going to be property field people picker. Yes. And we want to go ahead and give it a target property string. So this needs to match up with what we named up here on our interface. So if we scroll up, we can see the interface property was named people, all lowercase. Looks sharp. And then we give it a whole bunch of settings. And that's really what we're going for. Now, the settings that are inside of here, there's quite a few. We'll go ahead and do the label, which will be people picker. And next property, we can say initialization data. We don't really have any, but for the default, we'll say this.properties.people, kind of the empty array that we declared earlier. Allow duplicates, that's going to be false. Allow duplicate false. And then we get into principal type. And this is an enumeration, and this is why we imported something extra. But on the principal type, you have users, you have security groups, different things. We're going to put users only. For the on property change, we're actually going to leave that at this dot on property field changed. And no need to do open close parentheses, anything like that. We'll just go with the default. We're basically telling it to handle the default way, that we don't want anything custom there, that we're able to use the out of the box. Same thing with this properties, this context. We're not really doing much here. On get error message, this is another one where we could put in a custom function. We're not going to. Deferred validation time, you can add extra delay. We'll leave it at zero. And the key is going to be people field ID. And that's part of the unique key for the control. So we've got all of that saved in. Let's go look at our web part. As we've been typing, Gulp is busy here in the background, kind of reloading the web part for our live previews. We come over here to web part itself and do edit. You'll notice we now have two controls on the right hand side. This one says people picker. If we go ahead and type something in, we'll get autocomplete. This is all coming from Workbench. So these are sort of sample developers in the local directory. And that's all part of the Workbench's uh, sample data that we're able to access. Over here, we can still see the left hand side is doing the live reload where these are connected. So you know one thing about SPFX property panel is you don't have to have a save button. You can actually go ahead and make changes live and that keys in with the property we were just looking at over here about the deferred validation. Is it uh, live updating? And for this one we're going to leave it in live updating the same way as the 
uh, defaults. And really, you know, some of these things we could leave out, but kind of like putting them all in there just to see the, the full menu. Now over in the TSX file, this is where we do rendering, the people picker TSX, and there is our render method. This actually gives us our HTML display, right? One of the things that you'll see in the center is this.props.description. That's kind of our, our default that we see today, right? That's our text property that we have coming in. We're going to go ahead and take that and clone it, make a second one. But instead of escape for the parameter, uh, we're actually going to go ahead and give this a little something different. We'll do JSON stringify. And this particular property is starting out null, but then it becomes an array. And the array can have lots of different people in it. it it's got potential types. Uh, this does not exist on people picker types. Yeah, OK, we'll go ahead and update that. So we'll come over here to our props file. And we do need to add in people on this one so it can recognize it. All right, now that we've added people to our interface for the props.ts file, we can come back over to our rendering. We see we have JSON stringify for the display, and this will give us something where we can actually see it for the end users. We'll come back over to Workbench, and we'll reload our web part, make a few changes to the data, and see what we have. So here we're editing our web part, we're modifying the data. And one mis missing piece we have here is when we add, need to add the people property on the render method. So this kind of feeds the render method with the two inputs so that it can draw out HTML. And really, you want to match up from the upper piece here, where the class is storing the data, and then down here to the render method, where we're actually doing the display. So we need to feed in those two parameters to make the circle complete. And now back on this side, if we come in to edit our web part, you'll see we can test the description, we can do people picker, we can search for different users, and as we pick more users, we see more data rendering here on the array, and we can do all kinds of things. I like this with the JSON stringify, uh, simply because when you're working with a new object, you might not know what the different properties are. Like that if people picker has an email and it has a login, but those are all lowercase. This gives us sort of x-ray view where we can see all the data and then use it as we need in our project. But that's how you can change your SPFX web part to have a people picker and just a few easy steps. I mean, we're using PMP for the heavy lifting. After adding that to package JSON to make sure we're bringing in the controls, then we import to our primary web part TS file as a recap here. We also need to add it to our export for the properties that we are storing the data. We add it to the render method so that it can display it in HTML for the user. And we add it to the pane configuration so it's on the right hand side where users can edit. And that's really all that it takes. Uh, much simpler than some of the examples you'll find without PMP. So by all means, if you need a people picker in your web part properties panel, go ahead and load the PMP SPFX property controls. Thanks for watching.